Hello everybody, welcome to Betty's Bug. Today I am going to start a care series on how I care for all my animals and what I do to take care of them. Where I'm going to start off with the easiest species I own that I care for, which are going to be Madagascar hissing cockroaches. So, we have a few juveniles and a few babies. Oh, one's running. So, so we have a few babies, a few juveniles, and a few adults in here. They are my colony. I've been keeping them for, I would say, close to... I'd say a year and a half, maybe. And so far they have been my most favorite species of all time. The juveniles are really freaking fast. Oh, there you go. Go on your log with your friends and... That is my warning. They don't bite, they don't really do anything. They do hiss, just like that. When you first get your Madagascar hissing cockroaches, you're gonna need to know the difference between the males and the females. So that if you wanna start your own colony, you don't have too many males. Cause with too many males, they're gonna end up fighting, they will kill each other, and it just will be a bad colony cause the males will overtake the females in like an instant. This one right here is going to be your male. They are about the same size and length. The only way to really tell the difference between male and female hissers is by these little ones right here. Sorry, little dude. Now the males use these horns to fight for females. I have about three males in the tank and the rest I do believe are females. The babies I have not gendered yet. So females give birth to live babies. They give birth to around 10 to 60 babies at a time. Most of them do not make it though. When she goes to, I would say, in quotation marks, lay her eggs. What happens is there's this little yellow thing that comes out and she doesn't push it out all the way. If she does, that means it wasn't a fertilized egg and it was bad. So she'll push it out, not all the way though, and then she'll suck it back in. It's the weirdest thing ever. She sucks it back in and then they, more alien vibes, they hatch inside of her and then she pushes out her live. And when the babies are alive, they're like that small and they're white. Now for the ones that don't make it, the first meal those live baby roaches have is the dead young that didn't make it. And then for the rest of them that do make it, when they first shed, they'll look like this little small dude right here. And then they start turning into juveniles and they get bigger. When building your tank for your Madagascar hisser cockroaches, you want to start off with a decent layer of soil as they do like to dig. And then since these guys are a nocturnal species of roaches, they live on the forest floor of Madagascar. So you wanna to try to create that for them. So you wanna add plenty of soil for them to dig, plenty of leaf litter around them, add their water dish and their food bowls. And the best thing you can do for these guys since they are nocturnal, add plenty of dark hiding spaces as they will sit under these little logs down here. Flip them, boom. And they will hide under there. So when feeding your roaches, you wanna have kind of a shallow food bowl dish as the babies will need to be able to climb in and out of the dish. And I feed them a variety of vegetables. So we got carrots, blueberries, and strawberries in here. I sometimes feed them lettuce. If you are starting a colony of hissing cockroaches as feeders and you feed them citrus, you're gonna need to wait. Citrus isn't good for your bearded dragons or any other reptiles that would eat them. But if you're just growing them as pets, like I am, I'm just having this colony, they're purely pets for me. You can feed them citrus and oranges, lemons, stuff like that. Although I have tried lemons before, they didn't like the lemons, they didn't like the oranges. So I usually stick to strawberries, carrots, blueberries, and leaf lettuce. Do not feed them iceberg lettuce. Iceberg lettuce offers no nutrient value to them whatsoever. If you feed them strawberries and stuff like that, stuff with high water concentrate, uh, they won't really need the water dish. I just have it there just for safety in case they do. I change out their food when it gets wilted or anything like that. I just, sometimes I come in here and I make sure they're all healthy. They're not, they're looking good. You do want to make sure, I can use him as an example to let me. As you can see on this dude, he was one of my rescues from Petco. I got him from there as a feeder. You can see his exoskeleton is cracked and it is kind of chipped and broken. That was due to the stress. This is also what happens if your roach does stress a lot. 
it will start eating its legs. Very weird, but it does happen. He's been like this since I got him from Petco. He's doing a lot better now. He's very old though. So these guys live around one to two years before they do pass on. He's my oldest. He's like the original male to the group. The other ones are not so original. I do have a tiger hisser in here. Now, if you're trying to just breed them to sell them, do not mix breeds. It's bad. You don't want mixed ones, you know. But I mix some bush because he was the only one that was left from my other colony of roaches that sadly passed off due to a mold outbreak. Mold is a very bad thing for them. Black mold especially. Now, when feeding these guys, you want to keep fresh food in their dishes as mold and fungus will get into their respiratory system and kill them very fast. I had that happen to my tiger hissing colony and he is the only survivor from them. So I moved them in here as they are communal and they do need each other to survive. So they don't actually do have a respiratory system. They have holes along the side of their exoskeleton. That air kind of just flows inwards through and they take that air and use it how they need like how we breathe also make sure their water dish is nice and clean i do need to clean their water dish right now but make sure their water dish is nice and clean and since there are babies in here you do want to keep it kind of shallow i have had too many babies down in there now when it comes to cleaning like their poop and whatnot i do not keep a cleanup crew in here i do not keep any isopods or springtails in here probably why it kind of looks very rough. I usually do the cleaning myself. So what I do is every now and again, I'll take everything out of the terrarium. I will scoop the top layer where all the poop is at. I'll scoop it out and it's a very thin layer. So you want to take about like that much. You can put more soil in if you need to or whatnot. Get some fresh soil and layer it just on top. Put all their stuff back in, their food dish. And I do that around every three months or so to keep it nice and clean. I do plan on getting them into a front opener with a more bioactive setup. The best thing you can ever do if you keep a lot of animals like I do is to label them. I add notes like change food when wilted. I don't know how many are in here because it is an ever-growing colony. Alrighty everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that video of me going over how I care for my roaches. I hope you get some information out of it. If you want to start your own colony and have questions, just leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer. And thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all have a good day. Bye-bye, everybody.